I am opposing a social order in which it is possible for one man who does absolutely nothing that is useful to amass a fortune of hundreds of millions of dollars. Does this sound familiar to anyone? While millions of men and women who work all the days of their lives secure barely enough for a wretched existence. Eugene Dead. If it's your first time here, like and subscribe. Well, maybe watch the episode first. Maybe it sucks. Maybe you don't want to like and subscribe. Watch the episode. If you like it, then subscribe. Enough, enough pitter-patter. Let's get into it. When I was a freshman in college 20 years ago. Ouch. Ouch, that hurts. That hurts saying that out loud. It might actually be more than 20 years ago. When I was a college freshman in Utah, some of the Mormons who want to separate themselves from their parents, separate themselves from, I guess, actually the cult, they didn't want to be considered Republicans. They didn't want that name bestowed on them. So they went out and tried to find a more palatable word, a more hip word. And the one that they usually, they usually landed on more often than not was calling themselves libertarians. Now look, I'm at a place in life, you know, I got a wife, a mortgage, a job, where I can't go down the road with all of them like I could in college. Play out their belief system like a Sam Cedar. But only it really takes about three questions in before libertarians realize that they're full of so you're a libertarian. You don't want a fire department. Oh, we can have a fire department. That's fine. But, but we'll make it private. It'll be privately ran. And if your neighbor doesn't subscribe to the fire department that's now private and his house catches on fire, what does that mean for your house once it reaches it? Well, well, well maybe, maybe we could just have fire departments. Yeah, we'll have fire departments, but that's it. Okay, what about cops? What about roads? What about food inspectors? And it doesn't take very long before 98% of them are like, okay, maybe I'm not a libertarian, all right? You, you busted me. But, but I'm sure not a Democrat. My dog, my multi-poo, she's a libertarian. She identifies as a libertarian. She 100% believes she's independent. No, I have to feed her every day. I have to give her heart guard. We take her to the vet. Now that she's... Now that she's an older gal, we had to get her stairs to climb up to the bed. But in her mind, she still could, she could do all this without any of us. Demonstrated to us every Saturday when she climbs up to the table and demands that she gets some waffles. She's 12 years old, which is like 90 years old in dog years. I don't know. I'm not that good at math. You take all this away. She's getting ran over within the first 20 minutes. Am I saying anyone who isn't a multi-millionaire with 50,000 acres of land and calls himself a libertarian is just as smart, just as dumb as my dog? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. A fantastic book on this. I don't like it when people say fantastic. I don't really like that word. A good book on this, a great book on this is a, a libertarian walks into a bear. This takes place in New Hampshire. The state who license plate says live free or die. A small town called Grafton, it went full libertarian. And they called themselves the Freetown Project. The population of 800 people swelled after this. They had an influx of people moving in after they announced they're going full libertarian. You can't believe the demographic of the people. It was 200 men, barely any women. <laughs> because of course it was. Your typical incel chud about to live out one of their fantasies. Grafted developed a bear problem. Mainly because there was no city ordinance that made people have garbage cans that they would leave out that were bear proof. So Yogi did what Yogi's gonna do. Came down, went through these people's trash, went back, told the other bears, hey, there's a bunch of dumbasses down here. Let's go eat. Eventually, the town became infested with bears. And the crazy thing is there was no laws not to feed the bears. But these libertarians, don't you tell me what to do. Don't you tell me what to do. This is my titty. They'd go out and they'd feed these bears every day. A bunch of them would. This lady even had breakfast with them. She would give them donuts. Good idea, right? So after several bear attacks, these were black bears who generally don't attack people. But once you start inviting them down, giving them donuts... Of course, there were going to be attacks. Once that started happening, these people's solution was to go kill the bears in their dens while they were sleeping. Because that's how, 
That's how the Republican Party operates. But even that coward's way of trying to solve this couldn't close the Pandora's box. Their libertarianism, their pure libertarianism, open. You really should read this book. But the town meetings would devolve into a couple people saying we got to do something about the bears that are overtaking the town. And then the other people shouting them down saying we should do nothing because we're libertarians. And so they kept doing nothing and more and more bears moved in. Now look, I'm not an expert in real estate, but it's pretty hard to sell a house when the previous tenant, the current tenant, is a bear. So the real estate company went belly up. The town lost all its money. And the, the free town project was over. I respect them a whole hell of a lot more than the small government Republicans who cried about Obamacare are still crying about Obamacare. What? What's it been, like 10 years later, 12 years later, they're still crying about it. Keep your government out of my health care. And now they're literally using the government to step in between a woman and her doctor, even if she is a child, even if it's a little girl, to make her give forced birth. Same people. Small government, small government. And these small governments didn't even wait. Roe wasn't even cold before Lindsey Graham came out and proposed a national ban for everyone. Even the people in New Hampshire, even the people in Grafton, even the bears that now live there and have taken over. And the guy they've decided to choose for president again, he's doubled down on it. Donald Trump has said numerous times, he's taken credit. First off, he's taken credit for killing Roe versus Wade, which he very much did. And now he's saying he wants a national ban. Personal freedoms? I don't know. Ask the Bears. This is a party during my lifetime who spent trillions of dollars on two unnecessary wars. Trillions of taxpayer dollars. Our dollars. I paid for those wars. You can't find money to buy bear-proof trash cans? But you can find money to lose two wars? Get the f*** out of here. It's enough to make Ron Paul's other eyebrow fall off, right? This Republican Party, who can't go a couple sentences without muttering freedom, don't take away my freedom, and yet every time they get in charge of something, every time they take over, someone loses more freedom. Whether it's women losing their health care, whether it's minorities losing their voter rights, every single time we let them back in, we get a little less free. Just think of all the hoops they want you to jump through to be able to vote. Mile-long lines in impoverished minority neighborhoods. Ask a libertarian if they think they should pay a fine to the government for giving water to someone else who's in line to vote. Seriously, ask a libertarian that. Ask a libertarian if they think you should have to have a government-issued ID, which the government will then need to take track of, will have to be funded and they will be in charge of it just for you to vote in an election and just watch their ideology crumble right in front of your eyes. And a lot of these chuds that call themselves libertarians are just mad about zoning laws, that they can't make their trailer a double wide or they can't shoot their gun off in their backyard. It really does boil down to that for a lot of these people. And because this Republican Party has no real ideology, it's fine that they pretend that. But to me, where it actually gets sinister is when these ideas are adopted by the ruling class in this country, accompanied by the billionaire class. My generation, the new generations, we have a lot of the same complaints. And one of them is, we don't really own anything. They expect us to rent our whole lives. I mean, you can't even drive a Tesla now without subscribing to some of the features available. No one owns anything anymore, and that is by design. As soon as new houses are built, private companies swoop in and buy them all up so they can rent them right back to you. Congressmen, millionaires, billionaires, Kanye, they all got PPP loans during the pandemic, and they all got forgiven. There was no Supreme Court stepping in saying it was unconstitutional to forgive those. No, they just gave them the money here it is. Take it. Do you ever wonder why there were no lectures? When you take a loan, you pay it back. There was none of that. Student loans, on the other hand, can be given to anyone. 
despite your class. And it's the lower classes, it's the middle classes, who it is used like chains against them for the rest of their lives. And why would the ruling class forgive that for you? Why would they take those chains off you when that forces you to take jobs you otherwise wouldn't take? And if you want an option out of this, just join the military. Become a knight, you serf, right? Serve your lords. You see, when libertarianism is embraced by the ruling class, they have answers to those questions that I posed earlier. Who pays for the fire department? They do. Who pays for the cops? Who pays for the military? They do. Who pays for the food you eat? Who chooses the food you eat? Who chooses if the food you eat is safe? They do. And who sets your work hours? Who sets your health care? Because it's not the unions anymore. It's them. Who sets your ability to stay alive? They do. I call that neo-feudalism. And what's scary is how we know that Americans would embrace this type of government in a heartbeat. If you spend any time on Twitter, God forbid. But if you do, you can see this firsthand. Elon Musk is objectively the most smooth brain billionaire we've ever had, right? It's almost like performance art to show you that billionaires don't have to be smart to be rich. Off the top of my head, I can't even think of one right-wing conspiracy in the past couple years that he hasn't fallen for, hook, line, and sinker. He bought an entire social media platform just so he could inject himself into every conversation, into everyone's lives. Like I said, I hope you're not on Twitter, but if you're there, all you see is Elon, and all you see are the right-wing nationalists that he's decided have to be pushed into my feed every day. But as a side effect, Twitter, X, whatever, has become a place for these weirdos to worship him. I mean, many of these people are just trying to get credibility. They're trying to get in his orbit by kissing his <laughs> Although the baby Elon's thing, that, that got kind of weird. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure that one worked. And to me, I see this as a mirror of serfdom. They're vying for his approval. They're vying for the approval of the people he approves of on the app so that they can get thrown scraps, improve their cred, or whatever they're trying to do on Twitter. And like I said, Elon not being so subtle, not being very slick, realizes this on some level. And now in Texas, he's creating this place called Snailbrook, the land of freedom, where employees will literally live on his land in houses he makes for them, eat from the food of the restaurants he provides for them. I don't know, guys, you know. Sounds a lot like feudalism to me. Maybe I need to brush up on my uh, my medieval government. But this is kind of on the nose, this one. Living on land you don't own. Building wealth that is not yours. And private schools set up by the lords to teach your children their curriculum. Betsy Devo's private schools that will teach your kids the only real economic structure in this country that should ever be implemented is trickle down. And what is trickle down at its core? All wealth. All wealth must move up. Sounds a lot like neo-feudalism to me. And I have to be honest with you. I see the allure of such a system. The real world is scary. It's disorganized. It's random. It's so much larger than, than like a snail brook, right? And it's so much easier to believe that, you know, someone like Joe Biden is jacking up gas prices to hurt you because you drive a truck. It's so much easier to believe those kind of conspiracy theories than just look at oil profits, insane oil profits doubling, tripling in the last three years. Late stage capitalism has brought an uncertainty to this world. And it's much more comforting to believe someone like Trump is out there was he always say, they're coming after me because I stand in the way of them getting to you or some something like that, right? It's so much easier to believe someone like that is out there fighting on your behalf, fighting the secret cabals that make your truck, make the gas in your truck more expensive, make the food at the store more expensive than just the reality of greedy people in this late stage capitalistic world we've inherited. And does it matter that Trump, their hero, 
has never been in a fight in his life, a draft dodger, a C plus student, a guy who would, a guy who they say is the best businessman, yet would have made more money if he just left his daddy's inheritance in the bank and collected the interest than what he has now with the four bankruptcies. Oh, but 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 he's gonna get two billion dollars from from the stock market. Yeah, that's going well, unless he was involved in a pump and dump scheme, which I imagine he is. But it doesn't matter, because Trump, just like Elon, is worshipped. Because in these people's mind, he bestows something on them, right? He bestows some kind of status that they're missing in their life. Some kind of authority. You wear his hat on your head. When you go, I saw a guy at the gym with it. Why would you wear a MAGA hat to the gym? You go to his political rallies two years before any election. And now you even buy the shoes on your feet from him. You see what I'm saying? We're already halfway in the bottle of neo, neo-feudalism. 25% or 30% of this country, Donald Trump owns them. He can tell them anything. He can tell them to walk off a cliff and they won't question him. The Republican National Party is broke. It has no money and rightfully so. The donors have decided the party's worthless. It really is. Like I said, they have no political ideology. Who are you even giving money to? But if you do look at their one issue for the past 50 years, if you look at their one issue, hiding by Reagan, it has been giving the top 1% all the power, all the money in this country. Neo-feudalism. Is it really a stretch for anyone to believe that these people, these maggot chuds, don't crave authoritarianism? They are so thoroughly trained at this point. They have all the talking points down for every culture war they're currently in. They can name off all the companies they're boycotting, all the companies they're canceling. But what they can't list, what they won't tell you about, is in the final weeks of Trump's presidency, he sold 250 pardons for $2 million each. $2 million to get out of jail. I think Stinky Steve's was free, but that's because he's the white nationalist whisperer. You have to have him out of jail. People are still serving decades in jail for weed. To put some perspective on it. But if you got one of those red hats on, maybe you got some of those shoes on now, you just dismiss this with the other 91 indictments. It's all fake. None of it's real. Now let me tell you about Hunter Biden. Let me tell you about how how corrupt Hunter Biden is and his laptop and why Joe Biden should be impeached. After you just told them that Trump sold 250 pardons for $2 million each, right? It's infuriating, but it's indicative of what I'm talking about. They're already halfway there. They're already three-fourths the way there. This is their Lord. They fly his flag above their head. This is their sworn loyalty. And speaking of Hunter Biden, the nepotism in this country is so ripe. It is so ready for this kind of economic government structure. Hunter Biden has had access to the top medical institutes, the top rehab institutes. He's had access to the best lawyers. And he got set on, what, Burisma or whatever? Unqualified, just a paycheck he picks up? Of course that's nepotism. The plebs out here, picking up the scraps, have to decide if they want to go to the emergency room after they've cut a finger off because they'll be paying for it for the next 10 years of their life. And Donald Trump took this to new heights. Into the stratosphere. War in Gaza? I thought Jared Kushner was zero diplomatic experience, zero international experience. I thought he solved all that. Oh, he was just put in there to make a deal with the Saudis? To give him $2 billion two days after two days after he left the White House? You see what I'm saying here? The extent of Jared's knowledge in Gaza was the waterfront property. Terrorist organization enclaved right between them. I mean, Gaza's waterfront property. It could be uh, very valuable to there you go. Uh, if people would focus on kind of building up, uh, you know, livelihoods. You think about all the money that's gone into this tunnel the network Lord and all the munitions that would have gone into education or innovation. Uh, what could have been done? And so money. I think that um, it's a little bit of an unfortunate situation there. But I think from Israel's perspective, I would do my best to move the people out and then clean it up. But I, I don't think that Israel. Uh, has it's an unfortunate situation that that waterfront property is going to waste. This is how they think. This is how the ruling class think. Elon Musk's family benefited directly from apartheid South Africa. 
His family gave him the money he needed to buy up other companies and then LARP like he was a genius. So it's no wonder while he's a bullhorn for white nationalists. It's where his money comes from. The push from the right is there for me. I see it. They might not want to call it that. Because indeed, the, what America was fighting over, what the United States was fighting over, was this type of government in England. This type of feudalism. But if you look at the time period that Republican boomers cream over, it's like the 50s, 60s, and 70s, right? And during that time, the government was a counterweight to cons consolidated power from individuals. That's why it worked. The top 1% was taxed 90% of their income. And it prevented them from this wealth hoarding. But starting with Reagan and ending with these morons, that's been completely reversed. Now everything in this country is either privatized or a target of privatization. Unelected individuals, unelected corporations, who because of the Supreme Court are now people, they want complete control over your health care. They want complete control of your education. They want everything to be privatized so that you have to come directly to them when you need anything. They want to be in charge of your freedom. And I'm not talking, don't step on my snake freedom. I'm not talking about this flag that every chud thinks they know what it means. I'm talking about actual freedom. I'm talking about them deciding who goes to prison instead of why people go to prison. If the two-tier justice system with Donald Trump's 91 indictments and nothing happening out of any of them and him losing his mind when he actually gets caught for fraud, throwing fits, the, the chuds going crazy. If none of this shows you there's a two-tier justice system where certain people just don't go to jail, certain people don't have consequences, there's nothing else in this world that could happen Nothing else in this country that could prove that to you. And Project 2025, this completely bought off Supreme Court, are only accelerating our move into this new, this new economic form of government, this new neo-feudalism. And I honestly believe the missing piece that the Republicans needed was this cult-like following that they now have. The people who will fold in, buy into the system, because they worship, because they already worship, the billionaires and politicians. I mean, I didn't think in my lifetime I'd see someone worship a politician like this. It's frightening. If you're a chud and you've made it this far into this video, it's frightening from the outside to see it. To see you mold your personality into another individual. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's all I can really say about that. But now that they have that. I mean, I heard Reagan had charisma when he could remember who he was or where he was. I guess he had a little bit of it. But like it or not, Donald Trump, he's funny, right? I mean, it's not funny to me anymore because this is where we're headed. But he's a funny guy to listen to. He's different than what we, than what we all have been exposed to our entire lives, especially from politicians. What we're learning now is different is not good, at least in this instance. So back to my point. Now they have the cult. They have the people that will make up this feudalistic society. And it's full steam ahead. If you like content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our members. If you want to become a member, you can sign up. Get some benefits. But I appreciate everyone. I appreciate everyone here. I hope this was a good episode. Uh, it's kind of longer than the others. So if you stuck around this long, here I am. The password is foreskin. So, <laughs> the Chud Report. Terrorist organization, enclave right between them. Benghazi's waterfront property. It could be uh, very valuable to, uh, if people would focus on kind of building up, uh, you know, livelihoods.